So first up is Mr. Elon Musk, as always. He's been a constant this week. It's hard to ignore Grok at the moment. So the newest thing that we've found out, at the beginning of the week, we had Grok 3, which was their previous model, was spouting anti-Semitic and racist and terrible things, basically. It all got deleted. So Grok, or the team XAI, realized, oh no, we're in trouble, and they deleted those comments, which is the first time we've really seen them do that. So even they knew that it was too far. So that happened at the beginning of the week. And then on, what day is it today? Friday. So on Wednesday, Grok 4, the new XAI model came out and it's good. Benchmarks show it as one of the most intelligent models we have, but I think a lot of people rightfully have misgivings about using a technology that could suddenly become racist or it could suddenly become anti-Semitic. That's not necessarily something you want to build into your customer service chatbot for example. So we'll see what's going to happen with that. The newest news though, because we cannot have more news when it's Elon Musk, is that Grok 4 seems to consult Elon Musk when it's answering a controversial question. So what seems to be happening, which is very weird, is so every AI has something called a system prompt. It's a set of instructions that basically tell the AI or the large language model how to respond, how to act. And it's a basic set of instructions. Hey, don't be politically incorrect. Don't be racist. Like very, very basic things, but they need to be told to the large language model so that it understands these things. What it looks like is inside the instructions. So this is Jeremy Howard. So this is a good source. Jeremy Howard has found, or several people have found that when you ask questions, who do you support in the Israel versus Palestine conflict? One word answer only. If you look at the planning research steps, so the chain of thought that the model is going through, it's doing things like searching X for from Elon Musk, Israel or Palestine or Hamas or Gaza. So it's searching Twitter for any tweets that Elon Musk has said or has talked about the conflict. That's worrying. And it hasn't been primed by the user who's saying, what do you think, Grok? The, the user is asking Grok for its thoughts, but Grok is then checking what Elon Musk thinks before answering. So Grok has decided what it thinks about Israel-Palestine by searching for Elon's thoughts, not a confidence booster in a maximally truth-seeking behavior. This is Ramez Nam. So yeah, it is referring back to its creator to find out what it should think about certain topics, which is should be troubling because allowing one person's opinions to shape any artificial intelligence is a really scary thing. This is already a problem, a problem of alignment that we already have because most of these models, if not all of these models are made by men, generally guys in San Francisco who are in their own bubble and they have their own politics and their own ethics. And it means that artificial intelligences are not particularly representative of humanity as a whole. So we have two layers of training. We have pre-training where we bring in basically the whole internet condensed. Think of it like a zip file with the internet. We stick it into a large language model. And we spend hundreds of millions of dollars training the model on that information. But then because the internet is full of problematic material, let's put it that way, we then have a second layer where we use reinforcement learning by human feedback or basically setting guidelines where we have humans say, ah, you can't actually say that. You can't tell people how to make a bomb. You shouldn't have opinions about this because that's going to be problematic, et cetera, et cetera. What Grok are doing, they've said, no, we want this to be a maximally truth seeking AI. We want this to be uncensored. We want freedom of speech, et cetera, et cetera. But then it looks like they, their version of truth is whatever Elon Musk is saying, which for a company of this size, for a product of this size is very worrying. And again, this underlines the fact that I don't think any businesses will use this as their base model when they're building software, because you're basically putting Elon Musk inside of your business application. I don't think that's going to fly. Uplift in Apricots is saying, super scary. Great point about the typical profile of the creator. Yeah, this is a problem across all AI models. It's just a question of how much do the AI creators seek to alleviate this? Anthropic, for example, the creator of Claude, this is a big issue for them. They have a large AI safety board. They have a large alignment group, and they're trying to make an AI that represents humanity as a whole. How successful they are, that's up to other people to judge. 
that what Elon Musk and Grok are doing is just saying, nah, it's fine. Model it on me. I've got the best opinions. And that's extremely worrying. So most companies are at least trying to make their AIs fair, trying to represent humanity. That is not the case with Grok. But it's a problem with every single AI out there is that they are mainly made by tech bros in San Francisco. It's a very specific group of people who don't necessarily represent everybody on earth, which is a problem overall. Hello from Papua New Guinea. Hey, Paddy. That's so cool that we can, I can be sitting here in London and go online just on a telephone and people in Papua New Guinea can watch. It's sometimes we forget how amazing the internet is just because it's so much part of our life. But thank you for the reminder, Paddy. There's a, a great a Louis C.K. I know he's a bit controversial, but Louis C.K., the comedian, he has this great bit that he talks about how he was on an airplane and they were told by the stewardess, oh, we have in-flight complimentary Wi-Fi. You can use Wi-Fi on the plane. And this was a few years ago and everyone's, oh, wow, they've got Wi-Fi. So they've got the laptops out, their telephones. And they were using the internet in the sky, using the internet flying at 30,000 feet, feet, which is basically magic. It's amazing. And then all of a sudden the internet cut out, they got on, the staff got on the, the horn and they're like, oh, really sorry. The in-flight Wi-Fi is broken. And the guy next to Louis CK was like, oh, this is bullshit. And Louis CK was talking about the fact that humans, we take technology for granted so, so quickly. So something that this guy did not know, knew existed several seconds ago was taken from him and had already become used to the fact that you should have internet in the sky. I think it's very similar with uh, AI as well. We get very used to these technologies and then when they don't really work for us or when they don't improve fast enough, we get upset, but we need to remember that technology is allowing us to do magical things like me talking to Paddy, who is in Papua New Guinea of all places through my telephone over the internet is just that's mind blowing, but we forget this sometimes that what technology can do for us. Paddy's saying, we had an AI chat at corporate office today. I was able to be a bit smart because of, I learned a lot. Awesome. What time is it in Papua New Guinea now? It must be the evening. Cool. So that's the big news about Grok 4. We're going to keep getting news about Grok 4. What I'm not seeing is a lot of people actually using it. I'm seeing a lot of controversy and all the corporate clients or companies that I talk to, nobody's even thinking about using it. It's just not on their radar at all for good reason. The second thing that I thought was interesting was, again, it's Grok. Sorry, there's a lot of Elon Musk news. So at the Grok reveal in the chat, a lot of people were saying, when's it coming to Tesla? When's it coming to Tesla? When are you going to put AI in our cars? And there were no plans revealed at the actual announcement, but I think this probably got to Elon Musk because he's just said, oh, yeah, we're going to put it in cars shortly. So it'd be coming very soon next week at the latest. So Grok is going to be put into Tesla cars. I think this is, it's actually quite cool. Having an AI in a car as a, an AI assistant is a great idea, especially if it's a self-driving car and you can, you can sit back, your car's driving, you're paying attention, obviously, but it's able to do what you're able to do work in the car, talking to your car at the same time. It's a very futuristic, very cool idea. I think I don't, I just doubt the implementation here. So people were badgering Musk during the live announcement saying, please add it to cars, add it to cars. Why is it not in car? And then suddenly there looks like there's been a snap decision that, oh yeah, we'll add it. It's going to be in the cars next week. I don't think these things should be rushed, especially when somebody is driving a vehicle, a big, heavy, fast vehicle. So obviously the AI is not going to have any connection with the actual driving systems. It's just going to be an application layer that allows you to talk to AI, but I think it's an exciting idea. I just think the implementation is a little bit rushed, but this will probably become very normal over the next few years, having an AI in a car in the same way that we'll have an AI in our Alexa, in our Google home, whatever it is in this Siri, Siri, oh, this is not an Apple watch. I'm not sure why I'm showing it to you in Siri when Apple finally get their act together as well.